Hello, my name is Michael McCabe and I'm the CEO of Intelligence Fusion. Last New Year's Eve witnessed mass violence and criminality across Northern Europe, especially in France, Germany and Sweden. As we approach the 31st of December, a period when businesses will have personnel travelling, working as well as celebrating the holiday, I wanted to recap the incidents that Intelligence Fusion recorded last New Year's Eve, as well as look more broadly at terrorism during this period in Europe over the past 20 years. Prior to last year's event, police across Europe set in place comprehensive security measures in an attempt to prevent criminality and terrorist attacks which now hang over the continent throughout the year, but become more acute during the Christmas period due to the religious nature of the holiday. In Madrid, lorries and vans were banned last year from entering the centre of the Spanish capital during the festivities, likely in response to attacks such as the 2016 Nice truck attack which killed 86 people and injured over 400. In Rome last year, metal detectors and traffic restrictions were in place around Rome's main squares. In Germany, barricades were erected to protect civilians following the 19th of December 2016 Christmas market lorry attack which killed 12 people and injured 56. Safe zones for women were also created following the Cologne, Hamburg, Frankfurt and Dusseldorf attacks which occurred during New Year's Eve in 2015-16, in which a leaked German police report estimated that in Cologne, 1,200 women were sexually assaulted and at least 2,000 men were involved, often acting in groups. The threat of terrorism is also prominent during the New Year's Eve celebrations. In Europe, New Year's Eve is celebrated with social gatherings and events with many thousands of revelers taking part, which makes the event difficult to police, but also an opportune time for a terror attack to be conducted and for it to be successful. What I want to do now is just run through the terrorism-related incidents that we have recorded around the Christmas and New Year's holiday period in Europe. Now, what I've done is I've found all terror-related incidents and watched them within the IF platform. If I click on filter, then click on watching, and then bring up the incident in this panel, I can view the incidents in date order. The first incident was back in 2000 when 10 Islamic militants were arrested for attempting to blow up a Christmas market in Strasbourg. The plot was discovered just days before it was allegedly due to be carried out on New Year's Eve. The suspects, all Algerian or French Algerian, were sentenced to terms of up to 10 years, and the German court said the group had planned to blow up pressure cookers packed with explosives. The second incident occurred 10 years later when a Somali man attempted to murder the cartoonist Kurt Westergaard. Westergaard had previously drawn a picture of the Prophet Muhammad, which caused great anger amongst Muslims. The Somali man attempted to enter Kurt Westergaard's residence in Vibi near Aarhus. Uh, Westergaard sounded the alarm and a police patrol responded. When the patrol arrived, the Somali man smashed the police vehicle with an axe, causing the police to reverse. When another patrol arrived, the Somali man was shot in the arms and legs. The perpetrator was found to have links to Al-Shabaab, and in February 2011, he was sentenced to nine years in prison. Later that year in the United Kingdom, nine men were arrested for a plot to blow up the London Stock Exchange. The men wanted to send five mail bombs in the run-up to Christmas 2010 and also discussed conducting a Mumbai-style terror attack. A handwritten target list discovered at the home of one of the men listed the names and addresses of London Mayor Boris Johnson, two rabbis, the US Embassy and the Stock Exchange. Mohammed Chowdhury, Shah Rahman, Gurukanth Desai and Abdul Mia pled guilty to engaging in conduct in preparation for attacks of terrorism. Five other men pled guilty to other terrorism offences, one of which included Usman Khan, who would go on to conduct the 29th of November 2019 London Bridge terror attack, where he killed two people and injured three others. On the 11th of December 2010, an Iraqi-born Swedish citizen detonated a car bomb and then his own suicide vest in Stockholm, killing himself and injuring two civilians. Four years later, on the 19th of December 2014, a man entered a police station in Jules Tour in France and while shouting Allahu Akbar, attacked three police officers before he was shot and killed. The attacker was a 20-year-old French citizen, Bertrand Enzo Abenayo, who was born in Burundi. Enzo Abenayo, a recent convert to Islam, has been called the first of the lone wolves, part of a drumbeat of Islamist attackers who struck France with acts of lone wolf terrorism in the weeks preceding the Charlie Hebdo shooting. Attacks that began a month after Islamic State released a video on the 19th of November 2014, in French, urging Muslims to carry out attacks against non-Muslims. The video stated, kill them and spit in their faces and run over them with your cars. On the 20th of December 2014, a man was arrested after running over 11 pedestrians in five areas of Dijon in the space of 30 minutes. The man was reportedly shouting the Islamic expression, Allahu Akbar. On the 22nd of December 2014, a man in the French city of Nantes ran over 10 pedestrians in his white van in the city's Christmas market and then attempted suicide by stabbing himself. 
On the 7th of January 2015, two brothers, Said and Sharif Kouachi, forced their way into the offices of the French satirical weekly newspaper Charlie Hebdo in Paris. Armed with assault rifles and other weapons, they killed 12 people and injured 11 others in the building. After leaving, they killed a French national police officer outside the building. The gunmen identified themselves as belonging to the Islamist terror group Al-Qaeda's branch in Yemen, who took responsibility for the attack. Two days later, on the 9th of January 2015, Amidi Koulibaly killed four Jewish people at a kosher supermarket in Paris. Koulibaly was a friend of the Kouachi brothers who conducted the Charlie Hebdo attack. The hostage situation ended when police stormed the building and killed Koulibaly. Almost one year later, on the 7th of January 2016, again in Paris, a man attempted to enter a police station wielding a meat cleaver and wearing a fake suicide vest. The man was shot dead outside the station. He was carrying a statement which said he wanted to act to avenge the dead in Syria and had pledged his allegiance to the Islamic State. On the 11th of January 2016, a 15-year-old boy attempted to attack a Jewish teacher with a machete in Marseille. The teacher was injured in the shoulder, knocking him to the ground, however managed to defend himself using a copy of the Jewish holy book. The boy dropped the machete and fled the scene, however was arrested shortly after. During the arrest, the boy reportedly stated, the Muslims of France dishonor Islam and the French army protect Jews. On the 26th of November 2016, a 12-year-old boy tried to blow up a Christmas market in Ludwigshaf. The suspect put down a backpack containing a self-made nail bomb at the Christmas market, but the device did not go off because the detonator failed. On the 19th of December 2016, 12 people were killed and 56 were injured when a lorry was driven into the Breitscheidplatz Christmas market in central Berlin. A Tunisian man, Anis Amri, was the perpetrator and was killed four days later during a shootout with police in Milan, Italy. Two years later, on the 11th of December 2018, a shooting and knife attack took place near a Christmas market in Strasbourg. Five people were killed and 11 injured before the attacker fled in a taxi. The attacker was a 29-year-old Sharif Chakat, who had multiple criminal convictions and was on a security services watch list as a suspected Islamist extremist. On the 31st of December 2018, three people were stabbed at Victoria Station, Manchester. Two civilians and a police officer were stabbed in the attack. On the 4th of December 2019, a Ukrainian man was arrested for planning to detonate a car bomb outside a shopping centre and kill as many victims as possible. Reportedly, the suspect is a recent convert to Islam and is believed to have been in contact with, with Islamic radicals in Tajikistan. Finally, on the 20th of December 2019, 20 arrests were made of Islamic extremists in Denmark. The suspects are alleged to have been planning a terror attack. So looking at those terrorism incidents from the past 20 years in Europe, there are certain themes that we can pull out of those. In relation to targets, we're seeing themes such as uh, religious locations or um, targeting Jewish people, targeting obvious Jewish locations such as a kosher supermarket, targeting Christians um, at events such as Christmas markets, locations with large crowds, things like train stations, Christmas markets, shopping centres, um, and these will be targeted in order to actually increase the quantity of casualties as part of the attack, as well as security force locations such as police stations. In terms of the weapons used in the attacks, you're looking at things like homemade explosive devices such as pipe bombs, pressure cooker bombs. The use of multiple devices in one attack um, has also been seen, such as a car bomb followed up with a suicide bomb during um, the confusion of the initial device. Knives and machetes have also been used in low-tech attacks, as well as vehicles being driven around cities targeting pedestrians, and attacks conducted by multiple attackers such as the Kouachi brothers against the Charlie Hebdo staff. Finally, the use of firearms and fake suicide belts as a decoy is another weapon um, and tactic that we've seen. Copycat attacks are also interesting because there is the possibility for one attacker to then encourage others and through their act um, and for a chain of destruction to then occur with follow-up incidents. And there's also the use of cameras in at least one attack in order to get footage out for propaganda purposes. Attackers are generally Muslims of North African or Middle Eastern origin and in a couple of the incidents, attackers were recent converts to Islam. So looking at last year's criminality, in Sweden we recorded clusters of incidents in Uppsala, Vasteras, Malmö and especially Gothenburg. These incidents consisted of cars being set on fire, fireworks being used against police forces and public transport, as well as assaults against and drug-related incidents. Youth gangs clashed temporarily, closing down Stockholm Ragved metro station and shots were fired at the Mahmoud Mosque during the early morning prayers in Malmö. Surprisingly, we recorded no incidents in Stockholm and very few in Malmö, which was due to the heavy police footprint following the chaos of previous years.
Just to show you why that was surprising, the following image shows the instance that we've recorded in Stockholm for all of 2019. However, we've removed the criminal instance. The orange icons are bombing instance, and these range from firecracker and sound bombs, improvised incendiary devices and IEDs. The green incident is a grenade-related incident, and the yellow icons are direct weapons, so you can see multiple assassinations and a weapons cashier find. In Denmark, there were more incidents of fireworks being used against firefighters and civilians, as well as a murder in Copenhagen. In the UK, shots were fired in West Belfast. A terrorist attack occurred at Manchester Victoria Station. In London, there was a homophobic attack. A security guard was murdered by people attempting to gate crash a private party. Fireworks were fired at civilians in Ilford, and multiple cars were torched in Tower Hamlets as this phenomenon was replicated across Europe. Looking at the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, 25 vehicles were torched across the city, which was roughly similar to incident numbers in 2018. However, container bin fires escalated by over 50% from 67 to 158 incidents. Police and emergency services were also ambushed with fireworks, responding to arson attacks in cities such as Venendaal, Assen and Groningen. Police officers were forced to shoot at a driver who aimed his vehicle at officers in Rotterdam. Several vehicles were also torched in Utrecht. Dutch police state that the total number of New Year's Eve violence incidents directed at police nationwide was 59, over double from last year's total of 27. In Brussels, unrest was recorded in Molenbeek with at least seven cars torched and police and emergency services attacked with fireworks and stones. Four police vehicles and two fire engines were damaged and four police officers were slightly injured. 40 people were arrested in Anderlecht for disrupting public order, including arson attacks on cars and other objects, and a young man was also stabbed and killed in Sherbeek. In France, where the torturing of vehicles on New Year's Eve has been described by the media as an annual tradition, arson attacks and unrest were recorded across the country. In the Paris area alone, over 150 vehicles were torched in Yveline and Saint-Denis. Police officers in traps were compelled to fire their weapons to prevent an attack on officers who were attempting to prevent a rape and apprehend the perpetrator when confronted by a crowd of around 30 people. Major urban centres such as Lyon and Marseille were affected by unrest with 50 and over 20 cars torched in each city respectively. Unrest was reported in Toulouse with over 30 cars torched as well as arson attacks reported in Brest, Amiens, Reims, Limoges, Le Mont and Bordeaux. Intelligence Fusion recorded over 300 vehicles being set on fire in New Year's Eve in France. However, the actual figure was likely in excess of 1,000 vehicles, matching the pattern of recent years. Isolated shooting and arson attacks on properties such as Halal Butchers and a cultural centre in Nantes were reported. In Berlin, large groups of youths fired rockets at passing cars in Schonenberg, as well as attacking police with rockets in Prenzlauer Berg. And up to 60 youths attacked police and emergency workers with fireworks injuring eight police officers. A homemade firecracker detonation also damaged a building and multiple cars in Neukölln. The Berlin Fire Department reported a total of 49 attacks on workers during the New Year's Eve period, with 33 incidents being related to pyrotechnics. In the Barmbeck area of Hamburg, firefighters were attacked in their vehicle by a mob of people at a local shisha bar after coming to the aid of a man who had been stabbed, and in Binnenlaster, nine sexual offences were reported. In Leipzig, a branch of the Federal Court of Justice was set on fire and a pizzeria was also set on fire due to an explosion likely of firework. In Bottrop, a man drove his car at pedestrians. The driver, a German age 50, injured four people, including a Syrian and Afghan national. In Dortmund, 20 mass people spray-painted a train before throwing shopping trolleys in its path. In Frankfurt, a man was thrown in front of a moving train. However, the train managed to stop in time. And across Germany, fireworks and pyrotechnics caused significant issues, including numerous injuries and causing fires which damaged property. So in conclusion, businesses and organisations should be aware that New Year's Eve celebrations in Europe are now characterised by mass lawlessness and pose a significant threat to civilians, emergency services and security forces, especially in major urban areas. As witnessed in Sweden, France and Germany, local gangs of youths and organised criminals have become more increasingly aggressive in certain urban areas, attempting to restrict freedom of movement for police and emergency services in their localities. It should be noted that this is not just during the New Year's Eve period, but is actually a consistent trend across Northern Europe. In monitoring the events of 2019, this trend appears to still be consistent, therefore we see no evidence to suggest that this New Year's Eve will be any different in terms of the mass lawlessness fireworks and arson attacks, as well as violence directed against emergency services and the general population. In relation to terrorism, if an incident does occur, it seems likely to be in either the United Kingdom, France or Germany, and will target a public event for maximum propaganda effects, such as a New Year's Eve street party or public locations, such as a transport hub.
Security force locations are also a likely target for terrorist attacks during the New Year's period, and the attack could vary from a low-tech stabbing all the way through to a complex attack using firearms and explosives with multiple attackers. If an attack does occur, there is the threat of follow-up copycat attacks. Intelligence Fusion will be monitoring the events this new year from our 24-7 operations center. And the question I'd ask is, do you get this level of detail from your current intelligence provider? If not, contact us for a demonstration and you can monitor how events unfold this new year in Europe through the Intelligence Fusion platform. And I'll return in the new year to actually do a follow-up to this episode just to actually highlight what happened this new year and whether or not we actually witnessed a continuation of the uh, mass lawlessness trend that we've seen in recent years.